Science usually advances in careful, measured steps, a slow and deliberate process of discovery. Papers meticulously researched, subjected to rigorous peer review, and only then, after much scrutiny, slowly accepted into the canon of scientific knowledge. But on June 21, 2025, that rhythm was shattered, broken into a million pieces by an announcement that reverberated around the globe. It all unfolded during a live-streamed press conference held in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Dr. Fatima Al-Jamil, a young and exceptionally bright Saudi physicist, announced that her team at Kaost, the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, had achieved the impossible, a feat that scientists had been chasing for decades. They had created a stable, room-temperature superconductor. For over a century, this elusive goal was the holy grail of material science. Zero resistance to electrical current, zero energy loss during transmission, and all of this achieved at everyday room temperatures. The implications? Absolutely revolutionary. Energy production and distribution, transportation systems, the future of computing, advancements in medicine, every facet of our technological landscape would be transformed. Dr. Al-Jamil proceeded to present compelling data and captivating videos showcasing a seemingly ordinary sand-colored disk effortlessly levitating above a magnet, and crucially not immersed in supercooled liquid nitrogen, but suspended in the warmth of normal air. The world watched, captivated, a mixture of awe and profound skepticism etched on their faces. Was this a genuine breakthrough, a paradigm shift in physics, or an elaborate and meticulously crafted hoax? Saudi Arabia, a nation long synonymous with its vast oil reserves, was now boldly claiming a future powered not by fossil fuels, but by the uninhibited flow of electrons. Electrons surging through a revolutionary material derived from the very sand of their deserts. Their groundbreaking superconductor, christened Thara, was ingeniously created by treating ordinary desert sand with intense pressure, carefully controlled heat, and a proprietary catalyst, the exact nature of which remained a closely guarded secret. In an unprecedented move, Dr. Al-Jamil extended an invitation to the world's most esteemed scientists, urging them to visit Kaost to personally witness the experiments and rigorously replicate the results. This was an act of radical transparency, a testament to their confidence and a clear message. This was science, not trickery. As the live stream drew to a close, laboratories across the globe fell into an almost unnerving silence, researchers replaying the footage frame by frame, meticulously scrutinizing the data, searching for any sign of error or deception. The entire scientific world felt the tremors of a seismic shift, a profound and unsettling change in the landscape of physics. A new player had forcefully arrived on the scene and they hadn't come quietly, but with a bold declaration, a promise to fundamentally reshape our technological future and redefine the boundaries of what's possible. The world had been put on notice, the gauntlet had been thrown, the age of sand, it seemed, had truly begun, and nothing, absolutely nothing, would ever be quite the same again. In the hallowed halls of MIT, the sprawling campus of Caltech, and the cutting-edge research facilities of Berkeley, where scientific breakthroughs were almost a daily occurrence, a seismic event was about to unfold. The news from Riyadh landed like a meteorite, an unexpected and potentially devastating force. The initial reaction across the board? Dismissive skepticism bordering on disbelief. Surely there had to be a mistake, a miscalculation, a flaw in the methodology, or perhaps a deliberate trick, a carefully constructed illusion designed to mislead. American physicists, many of them veterans, scarred by the battlefield of failed superconductor claims, knew better than to get their hopes up. They gathered not in anticipation, but in disbelief, ready to dissect the evidence. The data emanating from Dr. Aljamil's lab looked almost too good to be true. Zero electrical resistance, a hallmark of superconductivity, a clear and undeniable Meissner effect, the expulsion of magnetic fields, and all of this unbelievably at room temperature. This wasn't just a challenge to conventional physics, to establish theories and long-held beliefs. It was a direct challenge to the established centers of scientific discovery, the institutions that had long considered themselves the gatekeepers of knowledge. For such a monumental breakthrough to originate from Kaust, a relatively young institution, and not from a traditional powerhouse of scientific research, was a profoundly humbling twist, a paradigm shift in the making. Emails flew across continents buzzing with a mixture of skepticism and intrigue. Have you seen this claim coming out of Saudi Arabia? Room temperature superconductivity? It simply can't be right, it defies everything we know. 
but the official invitation was indeed real, extended to researchers worldwide. Dr. Al-Jamil, with unwavering confidence, had thrown down the gauntlet, challenging the entire scientific community. Within a matter of hours, the initial wave of disbelief began to give way to a restless, almost feverish curiosity. Research teams rapidly assembled, fueled by a mixture of doubt and the tantalizing possibility of witnessing history. Flights were booked, visas hastily secured. The world's top scientific institutions scrambled to dispatch their best minds to Saudi Arabia, embarking on a journey into the unknown. They came not as collaborators eager to share in the glory, but as skeptical auditors, determined to scrutinize every detail. They came to rigorously test the claims, to meticulously find the flaw in the experiment, to definitively prove it wrong, to debunk the seemingly impossible. Yet deep down beneath the layers of skepticism and professional detachment, every scientist making that journey felt a tiny spark of hope, a flicker of anticipation. What if against all odds, the impossible was actually real? The race to verify or to debunk was officially on. The world's collective gaze, filled with anticipation and doubt, turned towards the vast expanse of the Saudi Arabian desert. The next pivotal chapter in the history of science, it seemed, would be written not in the prestigious halls of Boston or the cutting-edge research facilities of Pasadena, but in the bustling capital city of Riyadh. The old order, the established hierarchy of scientific dominance, was undeniably shifting. Genius, it appeared, was no longer bound by geographical constraints or historical precedent. The future of scientific discovery was now up for grabs, open to anyone, anywhere. And the entire world, with bated breath, was watching the unfolding drama. The stakes in this high-stakes scientific gamble had never been higher, the potential rewards immeasurable. The global search for scientific truth, for a room-temperature superconductor, had found a new and unexpected epicenter. And that epicenter, remarkably, was made of sand. The Thera superconductor story began not in a lab but in the desert. Dr. Fatima Al-Jamil grew up fascinated by fulgurites. Glass tubes formed when lightning strikes sand. She noticed their crystals were unusually ordered, more so than ordinary glass. Her insight, perhaps the trace metals in desert sand fused by lightning, created unique electronic properties. Most dismissed fulgurites as curiosities, but Fatima saw a natural experiment. She built a device, the al to mimic lightning's power in the lab. Her goal, recreate and control the conditions that formed fulgurites and unlock their secrets. She wasn't searching for a superconductor just the hidden potential of sand struck by lightning. Sometimes the greatest discoveries begin with a simple question. Dr. Al-Jamil assembled a diverse team at Kaust, Kenji Tanaka, a master of high-pressure physics, Priya Sharma, a computational prodigy, and Omar Al-Gamdi, an ingenious engineer. Kenji turned theory into experiment, Priya's simulations guided their tests, and Omar built the machines that made it all possible. Together, they worked long hours, united by Fatima's vision, and the belief that the answer to a century-old problem lay in the sand beneath their feet. Their synergy was their strength. They were not just colleagues, but pioneers. International, collaborative, and unburdened by old dogmas. In the Red Sea Lab, a new face of Middle Eastern science was born. They called it Project Mirage, a nod to the elusive nature of their goal. For two years they cycled through theory, simulation, and experiment with little success. Priya's models set the parameters, Kenji and Omar built and tested, but most attempts ended in failure. Pellets vaporized, shattered, or fused into useless glass. Each failure refined their approach. The breakthrough came by accident. A cooling system malfunction caused a rapid catastrophic temperature drop, quenching the sample. Instead of failure, Kenji found a near-perfect crystal structure. The accident revealed the missing step. It wasn't just about the lightning, but freezing the structure instantly. Suddenly, the mirage seemed within reach. The team's frustration turned to hope. The desert was about to give up its secret. Sometimes progress is born from mistakes, and the impossible began to look possible. With rapid quenching as the key, the team's pace accelerated. Priya's updated simulations predicted a perfect sequence, a 5 million ampere discharge, 2 million atmospheres of pressure, quenched in a nanosecond by lasers. Omar and Kenji rebuilt the Alberic device for these extremes. On experiment 714, the team gathered in tense silence. Fatima started the countdown. Lightning cracked, lasers flashed. For a moment, nothing. Then the sensors showed it, zero resistance. Omar retrieved the pellet, a small dark disk. 
On the test rig, Kenji powered the magnet. The disc wobbled, then levitated, stable and silent. The lab erupted. Relief, disbelief, joy. They had done it. The mirage was real. In that moment, a new chapter in human history began. The sand had learned to fly. The impossible was now fact. The world would never be the same. A century-old dream, realized in a Saudi lab. The future had arrived. And it started with a spark in the desert, the age of Thara had begun. How did ordinary sand become a superconductor? The answer quantum mechanics and precision engineering. In normal wires, electrons bump into atoms, losing energy as heat, resistance. Superconductors create a perfect path, letting electrons flow forever with no loss. Traditionally, this required extreme cold. Dr. Al-Jamil's team used immense pressure and energy, delivered in a split second, to force atoms into a perfect, rigid lattice. They doped sand with iron and copper, blasted it with artificial lightning, then squeezed and flash-froze it with lasers. The result? A new crystal structure, a superconducting motorway for electrons. The laser quench locked the atoms in place, making the state stable at room temperature. Thara is a fossil of that violent, controlled moment a piece of sand that remembers the lightning, and it holds a perfect path for electricity. A stable, room-temperature superconductor isn't just an upgrade, it's a revolution. Power grids could transmit electricity with zero loss, saving vast amounts of energy. Electronics would run cooler and faster, unlocking quantum computing and AI at unimaginable speeds. Maglev trains could levitate effortlessly, making near-supersonic travel possible. MRI machines would shrink and become affordable fusion reactors would be within reach. Every field, energy, transport, medicine, space, would be transformed. Thara is like fire or the transistor, a foundational breakthrough. The cascade of innovation it will unleash is only beginning. The world's infrastructure, economy, and possibilities will be rewritten. The age of resistance is ending, the age of superconductivity is here, and it all started with a grain of sand. International teams arrived at KAUST, some with a healthy dose of skepticism, unsure of what they would find. But they left as witnesses to history, their initial doubts replaced by awe and a sense of profound significance. The Saudi team, with remarkable openness, opened their doors, generously shared their data, holding nothing back, and, crucially, let others replicate the results, ensuring the validity of their findings. The world saw the levitating disk, a visual testament to the impossible becoming reality, measured zero resistance, defying conventional understanding, and confirmed after rigorous testing and analysis. It was real, a genuine breakthrough. The scientific landscape shifted, redrawing the map of innovation and discovery. Genius and discovery were no longer bound by borders or limited by geographical constraints. Saudi Arabia became a leader in innovation, stepping onto the world stage not just energy but in the very science that powers the future. The challenge now, scale up production, refine the processes, and share the technology openly for the benefit of all humanity. The next leap will require even greater global collaboration, a united effort, echoing the spirit of open science that made this discovery possible. The universe hides wonders in the ordinary, waiting to be uncovered, like a simple grain of sand, holding secrets within its structure. This discovery is a testament to human curiosity the relentless pursuit of knowledge, collaboration across borders, and the power of new perspectives, bringing fresh insights. The journey ahead is undoubtedly complex, filled with challenges and unknowns, but the promise is clear and bright, a more efficient, streamlined, connected through technology, and ultimately, a more sustainable world for generations to come. The age of oil, with its limitations, is gradually fading into the past. Thanks to a flash of lightning, metaphorically speaking, in the heart of the Saudi desert, the age of light-speed electrons, and the incredible possibilities they unlock, is just beginning. The future is here. It's tangible, it's real, and remarkably it's fundamentally made of sand, transformed by human ingenuity.